The end of the ATF's amnesty period for pistol braces is approaching fast. In this video, we're going to discuss where we are currently at with the efforts to actually get an injunction to halt this new rule before it essentially goes into full effect before May 31st. Currently, the amnesty period is set to terminate at the end of this month, and we have already lost one of the lower court cases which aim to block this new rule. If we're not able to get an injunction soon, then the ATF's new rule goes into full effect and they will then treat all braced pistols as SBRs and subject them to the NFA's restrictions and also subject people to potential violations if they are not in compliance. Also, the ATF is now desperately trying to prevent the hardened Sixth Circuit bump stock ruling, which recently came out, which struck down the ATF's bump stock rule they are trying to prevent that case from also impacting these lawsuits, which challenge the pistol brace rule. Now, before we jump further into what these cases are doing and where we're currently at, I want to thank the sponsor of this video, which is Kershaw Knives. Kershaw makes some of the best knives available on the market right now, especially if you're looking for an EDC knife. And just recently, Kershaw dropped a new line of knives that you can pick up. I carry a Kershaw knife every single day for my EDC. I can't recommend them enough. So if you go to their website and order and you use the code 23SCHOLAR20, you can get 20% off of your order and free shipping on $100 or more. Now you may remember from the last video that I put out talking about the pistol brace rule, we recently found out that a federal district court judge in Texas, Judge Reed O'Connor, denied a request to place a halt on the new pistol brace rule. The ATF received a slight win, but they are currently trying to expand that win to apply to all these other lawsuits. The lawsuit that they initially won is the Mock v. Garland FPC lawsuit. In his recent orders, Judge O'Connor stated that the court holds that plaintiffs have not carried their burden to demonstrate their substantial likelihood of success on the merits of any of their claims and therefore denies plaintiffs motion for preliminary injunction relief or in the alternative for postponement of the final rules effective date. From that opinion, the lack of history and evidence appeared to be one of the main things that he didn't like. However, there was some other concerning language in his order, which appeared to say that maybe he was going to side with the ATF. For example, he stated that rules explaining when a brace or stabilizer redesigns a firearm or remakes a firearm sufficiently to a short barreled rifle are therefore permissible. What the final rule purports to do is identify the criteria by which enforcers in their application of the statute will make that determination. It does not, as plaintiffs suggest, rewrite the definition itself. In short, it does not appear that the final rule so clearly contradicts the statutory definition of rifle that preliminary injunctive relief is in order. Thus, plaintiffs have not carried their burden to show a substantial likelihood of success on the merits of this APA claim. So there, Judge O'Connor is stating that he believes what the ATF did in the pistol brace rule is likely within their statutory authority. FBC did file an appeal up to the Fifth Circuit Court of Appeals, and currently they are asking the Fifth Circuit Court of Appeals to grant an injunction pending the appeal. What this means is that FPC wants the Fifth Circuit to issue their own injunction and to halt this rule, essentially halt it before it goes into full effect at the end of this month. Whether or not the Fifth Circuit will actually step in right now and grant that injunction is not known, but the Fifth Circuit has been favorable in some regards, especially recently when you look at the Cargill decision. So I think it really just comes down to what judges are on that panel or who ultimately decides whether or not they're going to grant that emergency relief. There is also the FRAC lawsuit, which is in a federal district court, and that is in North Dakota. Recently, the ATF submitted a letter to the court saying that the court there should ignore the recent Sixth Circuit decision which struck down the ATF's bump stock rule. That was the Hardin case, and the ATF claims that the Hardin decision addressed a rule that bans bump stocks as a machine gun part. By contrast, the rule at issue here does not ban any weapon or accessory. It merely sets forth the factors ATF considers in determining whether a weapon equipped with a stabilizing brace has been designed or redesigned, made or remade, and intended to be fired from the shoulder and is therefore a rifle under the NFA and GCA. This is simply an argument being made by the ATF where they are trying to downplay the actual impact that this rule will have. The ATF then goes on to say in this letter that Hardin is not only distinguishable on the facts, but its application of lenity does not follow here as Judge O'Connor already determined in Mock v. Garland. Here the ATF is trying to avoid the rule of lenity from being used against this new brace rule 
and they are trying to avoid it being applied like it has been applied in other lawsuits like the bump stock lawsuits and also the frames and receivers lawsuits. Right now, there is a very significant legal battle taking place and the battle is to get rid of Chevron deference and instead to replace it with other doctrines like the rule of lenity. Also interesting on this point is the fact that the Supreme Court recently took up a case which deals with Chevron deference and all indications currently are that the Supreme Court will in fact likely strike down Chevron deference, maybe do away with it, or at the very least significantly constrain it. So this is a very interesting issue where even the Supreme Court may at some point weigh in, maybe not specifically on the firearms issues, but just generally on whether or not Chevron deference should continue to go forward. Now, further in this ATF letter that they submitted in the North Dakota frack case, they essentially say that there is no comparable change in the ATF's interpretation of the relevant statute. The rule merely provides public notice of ATF's understanding of the analysis required by the statutory framework and identifies the factors the agency will consider in determining whether a brace-equipped weapon is a short-barreled rifle under the NFA. The rule does not categorically classify such weapons or classify any weapon at all, and instead provides consistent criteria for application in future classifications. Thus, Hardin is neither binding nor persuasive as to any aspect of the matters before this court. This last statement here in the letter is pretty hilarious in my opinion because the ATF here is claiming that the new rule doesn't change anything. It doesn't change definitions. This is the way it's always been. But instead, through this rule, they are simply providing clarification. Of course, one of the really interesting things that they're leaving out is that this claimed clarification by this rule will ultimately result in millions of gun owners being felons because once this goes into effect, if maybe you didn't register under the amnesty period, you could potentially be found in violation of the NFA by having a brace equipped pistol. Currently, FRAC is also trying to get an injunction, but it does not appear right now that there's a hearing in place or maybe that there's going to be a hearing on their motion before the end of this month. And that kind of just leaves the last case that in my opinion, I'm gonna be keeping my eyes on the most. And that is the GOA in Texas lawsuit that's filed against the ATF. Right now in the GOA case, the judge has asked the parties to brief what impact the mock decision has on their current request for a preliminary injunction. GOA and the ATF have both submitted those briefs to the court. And currently there is a conference which is set for May 23rd. Now, just because there's a conference doesn't mean that anything substantial will come out of it, but really that's the only court deadline we have right now in any of these cases. There's some other things that are pending, but that is the only real firm date we have. There's potential that maybe something could come out of that conference, but again, we don't know. In my opinion, I think that maybe the deadline will come and go without an injunction. It does not seem like any of these courts are moving fast to resolve this issue. And really the only court that did ultimately move fast was the mock lawsuit with Judge Reed O'Connor. But again, we lost that case essentially. There was a denial of the injunction. And really that denial of that injunction really just hurt all these other efforts in all these other cases because now it appears that some of these courts are now even slow walking the process even more because you have that decision out there. So we should probably be keeping our eyes most on the GOA lawsuit and then really just the Hail Mary that's being made in the mock lawsuit where they're asking for the Fifth Circuit to step in and to grant the injunction. Um, but if you're interested, maybe what's going on with the Supreme Court case that I referenced where they are seeking to maybe to strike down completely Chevron deference. You can watch this video here on the screen, but as always, thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe and never forget this nation was built by arm scholars and this nation will be maintained by arm scholars.